up everybody so we have a final exam coming up soon and I wanted to make sure that you guys were well prepared so I got my coke zero hope you do too you guys know how I love this mm, refreshing so drop my cap so we're gonna talk about today the age of exploration otherwise known as the age of discovery right kind of like that spongebob episode imagination but this is the age of discovery so as you can assume this means people are going out and discovering things and you guys know already because we discussed it that it's going out and discovering new lands new ideas uh finding new people and really spreading everything around everything is changing in the world during this age of exploration when people are actually going out and exploring but for this video I really want to stick to the five key instruments that an explorer like Christopher Columbus would need during this time period to really get around now not all of them were able to use all of this depending on when they were sailing but these are five very key components key new technological ideas that were brought about during this time period specifically to help sailing. So let's get after it. Number one, you're going to have the astrolabe. Astrolabe. It's a weird word, I know. But, you know, astro kind of refers to the sky, space, everything like that, kind of like astronomy. So the astrolabe really helps sailors measure the angle of the sun. And I know that sounds weird. Why in the world would you want to measure the angle of the sun? Well, remember, these people are getting on ships that aren't like today's ships, and they don't have a GPS. So they need some way of getting around. And more often than not, the way that they got around was by measuring stars, measuring the sun, the moon, anything that they could find in the sky they would use in order to point them in the right direction. So what the astrolabe was, it's this funny looking thing that they would look through and the angle would be pointed towards the sun and then pointed towards uh, another direction that they would go in and they could convert the angles that they're looking at into latitude. Now I'm sure you guys are all aware of latitude and longitude, you've learned about it before. It's still used today, not the astrolabe, but longitude and latitude. So that concept, finding longitude and latitude, has kind of been universally applied throughout history of every spot in the earth has some type of numerical code to it, and it's kind of a GPS requirement in any single spot that you're at. And that's how popular games like Pokemon Go and other things know where you are by using longitude and latitude and just converting that into the normal type of GPS. But back then, they would use the astrolabe, which was a funny-looking device, like I said. They would look through it, measure the angle of the sun, and they can convert what they were looking at into longitude and latitude, which then they could use on a map to find out where they were and which bearing they had to go to. So number two is the caravel now the caravel was a newer type of ship and it was a very maneuverable ship it wasn't very big but even though it was small it was very useful for sailors uh, and for merchants because if you have a smaller type of ship that's now created differently specifically with the sails they had latin sails which was like those triangle like sails that you would see on a sailboat even today and it could sail with the wind, uh, and it was pretty fast. It would get you where you needed to go quite quickly, more so than these other big, huge ships that you could fit a lot of people on, you could fit a lot of cargo on, but it's not necessarily going to be very fast. So even some of the most famous explorers of this time period are going to use a caravel ship, and it's normally associated with the Portuguese and the Spanish, but obviously, because of cultural diffusion, which we'll talk about at a later time, um, people are following in their footsteps. They're building ships that are pretty much identical to these caravels. So, so far you need the astrolabe and you need the caravel. Number three, a magnetic compass. 
We still have them today. If you're ever lost in the woods, you would really want some type of compass to sh tell you where you're going and where you're supposed to be. It gives you um, the very bare basics of if you want to go east, you got to follow compass east. Well, during this time period, they didn't have a magnetic compass until it was created, obviously. Before that, they had different versions of compasses, but they weren't widely used because they weren't widely accurate. But now, you're going to actually have a magnetic compass, and people are going to be able to use it. It was a very useful navigation tool that allowed sailors to know what direction they were heading in. Um, the magnetic compass used a needle inside, just like it does today, and the needle would always point to north. They figured that out. Don't tell me how. I'm not a science or math guy. All I know is they were able to figure that the needle would always point to north. And so it's a very useful tool because whenever you're sailing, if you know what direction you're heading in, you're less likely to get lost, especially with the different maps that they had and the astrolabe and everything like that. So, so far we've covered three, the astrolabe, the caravel, and the magnetic compass. Now, number four is the sextant. Now, the sextant is also a very weird looking thing. I'll post some pictures for you guys to see. Believe me, it's strange. And the name itself is strange. But the sextant ultimately is like the astrolabe, but it's like the astrolabe 2.0. You know how every year they come up with a new iPhone or a new Samsung. So right now we're at the Samsung 8 and I think we're at the iPhone 8, 9 or a bazillion. I don't know. But it's supposed to be better than the last one. Well, the sextant, think of it as like the iPhone 5 as opposed to the iPhone 3. It's supposed to be a lot better, a lot updated. So the sextant used all the similar things as an astrolabe did, but it had uh, better mechanisms and a more accurate uh, projection of the latitude. So obviously, if you're going out sailing into a wide open ocean, you're going to want accurate results. You want to be as precise as possible. Otherwise, you're going to get lost and die now number five on these useful technologies that sailors would use is mercator's projection now this isn't a technology that's tangible but it was a guy's projection a guy's type of map that was used and he used a cylindrical type of map that projected and utilized longitude and latitude which was new at the time uh, most maps were just kind of plain and they were unfinished, but now more people are going out, filling in different parts of the world, filling in longitude and latitude, and Mercator's projection is really a type of map in which you could pretty much draw a straight line from where you are to where you want to go and know the longitude and latitude and the bearing that you need to be on. And obviously, if you have that, that's great, but it's also not enough. You're going to want a boat to use, like the Caravel which we talked about. You're going to want to use the astrolabe or the sextant, most likely the sextant, because it's newer and more improved. And you're going to want a compass too. But Mercator's projection is very useful because it is a better version of a map. It was honestly, all this stuff combined was the GPS of their day. And we've come a long, long way, especially today where everybody has a smartphone where you can just put in the GPS and not even know how it's being used even though they are using longitude and latitude. It's amazing how far we've come, but just know it wasn't always that way. These sailors during the age of exploration to go out and find new places, go out and learn new ideas, go out and communicate with new people, they needed to get there by the use of technology. So one of the key themes in the age of exploration that we look at is really the technologies that made it happen. Yes, the people are super important, but a lot of those discoveries would not have been made had it not been for the people. So that's your review of that. Hope you learned something.